Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Apa King Carter here. I want to welcome you guys to a new video. Today we're going to be talking about the playmaking badge rep method. Now, a lot of people have been enjoying my rep methods for driving and finishing as well as for shooting. But today we're going to be talking about playmaking. So make sure you guys hit that like button. Subscribe if you're not. Turn on noties. Let's get into the video, man. All right, so first and foremost, one thing that you need to know about the playmaking rep method is that there really is no true rep method to it. There is no true set play that can help you truly get more alley-oop assists as fast as possible within a game. But as a person that has been playing 2K for a couple years now, I watched a couple videos on YouTube, and I've seen a couple people doing their rep methods, and I said, you know what? What I'll do is I'll perfect it. So what you want to do is you want to throw a whole bunch of alley-oop assists as much as possible. But the first thing that you want to do is when you do get a new playmaking upgrade, I want you to put alley-oop passer on Hall of Fame. I want you to put floor general on Hall of Fame. I want you to put dimer on Hall of Fame. I want you to put downhill on Hall of Fame. I want you to make sure that you are a true facilitator while doing this method. And finish all of your badges within a two to three day period. Don't take a week. Don't take two weeks to finish all your playmaking badges. Now, what I truly do is out on fast breaks, I kind of wait for my teammates to come up. And I have four slashers on my team that can catch the ball every single time I throw them the ball. Sometimes they do miss them, but for the most part, they do catch them. Now, you guys see that I called a nice little pick and roll play here. Sometimes the defender does get stuck. Sometimes he doesn't, but for the most part, you can't really worry about the turnovers too much because turnovers are going to happen simply because some people just can't catch. Like right there, Ilya Sova, he's not one of my slashers, but I trusted him to get that play. He literally does the animation that my point guard does, and this dude is like 6'9". So you guys can see as the fast break happens every time, I go ahead and throw it up. I take the ball from whoever is running down court. If they don't pass it to me on a fast break, sometimes I do call a timeout so we can go ahead and reset. But what I want you guys to do is average about 7 to 10 alley-oop passes per game. And you guys will get some nice rep. You'll get some nice badge progress out of this. Now you guys notice that Paul George didn't clear that alley-oop lane for me he ran through so i decided to go ahead and wait on harold right there and he came through for me now this tends to happen on pro on all-star on a superstar and on hall of fame so what i decided to do was i decided to play a game on pro for you guys and play a game on hall of fame with the same type of method all right now you guys notice on pro i currently have 20 and 10 which will also go up. But the reason why I have 20 and 10 is because it's kind of so easy to score on pro. And I wanted to see if the double team would happen and would help me within this method. But it didn't. But it's okay. Now, sometimes I try to get Harold to also cut to the basket. Sometimes he doesn't. But I love it when players actually cut and clear out for me without me having to call plays. Now, a couple playmakers told me that what you could do is you can call a uh, pick and roll play up uh, near the hash mark and you can kind of like cancel it out and have that player cut to the basket haven't really had too much success with it simply because in my general offense which is, means my setup players tend to clear in a five out aspect then clearing out and cutting to the basket all right so what we're going to do is we're going to look up the my points here after they uh go in we'll see how much badge progress we got as well as what those points attributed to. But um, to remind you guys of what I just said, like literally 30 seconds ago, if you are on a team that plays five out, it will be harder for you to get these cuts because players just won't be sitting in the paint waiting for a pass. So you really have to call more pick and rolls than any. Now, we got 9,224 badge progress points towards playmaking on pro got a total of 18,000 points for five minute quarters on pro so just think about it that's almost 20k for five minute quarters on pro now we're not done 
I have 11 alley-oop assists. Remember, I told you guys want to get like 7 to 10. And I have pick and roll assists. I got times 3 and I got 900 for that. And I got 524 for regular assists. Now, the next game that we will play will be on Hall of Fame. This is going to be ecstatic just because of the simple fact that when you're playing on Hall of Fame, Players tend to bite a little bit more. Players tend to play up on you a little bit more. So when the pick and roll comes, the double team is always coming for you. So that allows players to slip behind and get easier alley-oop passes or to just generally just throw it overhead or throw a bounce pass and get an easy assist. Now, don't get me wrong. Getting assists is great. If you feel like you can't throw an alley-oop in a certain situation, don't be scared to just actually just throw the ball because you get good pass, you get leading pass to score, you get a regular assist, you get a lot. Now, starting this game out with playing against Minnesota, like I told you, I call for it on a fast break every single time. If Lou Williams wouldn't pass it to me, I would have called a timeout. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Now, you guys also have to look at how many points I get every time I throw an alley-oop. Now, what I'm going to do here is use that little clear out. Now, that was the option where I called for the uh, pick and roll, and then I canceled it. And you've seen how the double team came up, and Kawhi was able to get through. Now, I'm going to go ahead, call it, cancel it again, and throw it. This works better when you're on hall of fame when you call for the screen and cancel it and he cuts to the basket for some reason the defender just never wants to guard the person that's cutting which makes it so much more easier to me man now like i told y'all i throw it on a fast break every single time man if you're on a fast break and you got a person like paul george Kawhi leonard or harold cutting to the basket throw it up don't go ahead and throw it to nobody that can't jump you feel me now i'm calling the pick and roll i'll go ahead and call it where he can cut outside of baseline and i just throw an easy pass sometimes alley-oops don't have to be thrown okay you don't have to throw alley-oop every single play but i recommend that you throw alley-oops now me and harold do a little pick and roll he clear out call for it and we throw the nice little alley-oop now with people like harold of course he probably has brick wall and him just being a big body anyway you can call pick and roll with players Pick and roll with certain players work. I wouldn't call a pick and roll with Ka Kawhi. I would cancel Kawhi every single time and have him cut down. Now, you guys notice on that pick and roll, the point guard switched and had no business down there with the big and could not stop that pass. If you call for a pick and roll and the big backs up into the paint to guard the pick and roll, it's a GG. You do not want to throw in that situation. Like right there, see how they switched it off? But Lou Williams actually cut for me. And I don't know why he caught it, but he did catch it, and he completed it. In any other situation, that could have been a turnover. You guys see that I have a high amount of turnovers in this game, and that's simply because it is Hall of Fame. And sometimes I do throw from half court as well. <laughs> you Sometimes you just have to throw it, man. If you don't throw it, you're not going to get points. Now, one huge thing that 2K, I guess, hasn't noticed or may not fix is that you can get a whole bunch of turnovers, and it really won't count much towards your badge progress. You can have 25 turnovers and it won't matter to your badge progress because you're actually getting alley-oop assists. But one thing that I can say is when you're getting those turnovers, it is going to destroy your grade, which means if you're rep grinding and badge grinding at the same time on Hall of Fame, you're not going to get an A-plus most of the time. And it's going to hinder your overall rep at the end of the game. Now, like I told you, man, pick and rolls are really good. Mismatches are good, but sometimes they don't work. I go ahead and call for the ball. Wait for somebody to cut down. Cancel it with Kawhi. Kawhi cuts. Cancel it again and throw it up, man. Now, the cancel does work on Hall of Fame, but on Pro, uh, calling for the pick and roll and then canceling it and waiting for the cutter, it never really works for me. Now, I tried to end the game without any points, but they were fouling me so much, man. It wasn't nothing that I can really do. So let's go ahead and check our my points. Let's check our badge progress. Let's check everything. You guys will see the multiplier at the end of this game for Hall of Fame, in which I do want to say one quick thing. When NBA 2K20 first came out, we were getting two times the multiplier for Hall of Fame, and Mike Wang and them dropped it down to 1.5, and it goes up to 1.6 for a few, and I'm pissed off about that. But in this game, we got 14,000. Uh, badge progress points for playmaking so 
definitely if you're grinding this playmaking method hall of fame is not a bad choice all right make sure you guys playing on hall of fame if you want to play on pro that's up to you bash progress really doesn't change much but i feel like with hall of fame certain methods work a little bit better now since we are done with playmaking it is time for me to go back to my shooting rep method. If you guys missed my shooting rep method video, I streamed it here live on YouTube. Go check out my videos. The title should be best shooting slash rep method. And I'm going to holler at you guys in the next one, man. Peace. Yeah. You can't watch this whole video without subscribing.